Okay, hi uh, everyone. My name is Barb and I work at the Akron Public Library, the main branch. I'm a, a reference librarian and our department focuses mostly on uh, local history and genealogy. So uh, we do all sorts of genealogy. We, we focus a lot on local history, but we'll, we'll do our best to try to track records, you know, through worldwide if we can. Um, but we do focus on local. Um, I grew up in Slavic Village in Cleveland and currently, you know, work down here and live halfway in between. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much um, my story. So all you really need to do is go to our website and then where it says search the catalog, you just click on the website instead of the catalog and then just type in library card and, and there'll be a pretty easy explanation on how to actually do it. Um, I gave them a heads up downstairs in case, you know, a lot of people do end up doing it now, um, but you don't have to. This will give you access to the different databases that I'll talk about. Uh, most of them are available from home right now. Some of them aren't, but because of COVID, they've made some available that normally are just ones that you see when you come in the library. So you can fill out the application, you'll get a card number and you can access them. I think though, to check out books, you physically have to come in with your ID and they'll get, they'll present you with a you know hard copy library card. And I, I believe most libraries probably have a similar procedure for um, library cards. So I will stop sharing. And that is uh, basically how you would do it. And you and I have talked about the value of multiple cards because right. it's like if within your state you can do multiple big districts and that potentially gets you the resources that if Cincinnati has a particularly, I don't know, they're supposed to have a good zoo. If they have a good section they, on zoology, you they could- have a very good uh, genealogy section in Cincinnati and Columbus, those areas where, where like Columbus, if you have a Columbus card, you can access the, a lot of their different uh, newspapers, which is key for genealogy. And then also too, with here with Akron, we have you know some of that available too. And, and you said you have to go in person to check out a book, but I am a library junkie and rarely go in person. Uh, thanks to some of the digital apps. Right the e-media. Um, I read library books nightly at, um, on my Kindle. So yes. if, if any of you are paying lots of money for your Kindle, like cut it out, get get one of the Libby or Overdrive apps. So it looks like most people have one that they use pretty often. Probably those are the ones interested in the event. Um, about a quarter have it in more than one district. So oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And it, it, it's not a, you know, penalty or anything to have multiple library cards, just a matter of keeping track. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're an Ohio resident, you can definitely get one for Akron and utilize those databases, which, you know, people don't realize, you know, a lot of these different libraries have a lot of cool databases that you can do your genealogy on. Also, you can do other things, you know, there's a lot of other things on there. So keep that in mind. With that, do you want to get into what some of those are? Well, um, I do. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, genealogy itself and uh, doing a little bit like uh, uh, things to consider when you're doing your genealogy. So um, what I might do here is grab the screen. So. First, I, I don't have a PowerPoint, but I'll just talk a little bit about some of the things you need to consider. Like for instance, um, like a lot of people said, they, they rely a lot on family stories and, and that's so important. Um, there's different things you can find out there. Like if you're, if you're talking to ancestors, 
there's lists of or oral history questions you can ask. Like I, I have a sheet here and you could find them online pretty easily. But you know, some of the things like you wouldn't think until somebody's gone, it's like, boy, I wish I knew that. Like, like with my father, I ended up, he passed away last year, but about two or three years ago, we were walking through the park and one of the blimps came over and he said to me, I remember when the Hindenburg crashed. And I'm like, no, you don't. And he goes, yes, I do. I mean, and he really did, you know, and that was in the thirties, you know, and just different things like that, that you just don't think would be, you know, just would never think to ask, you know, like that, what they remember, but, um, or just like, like what chores they did as a kid. I think I did ask him that and chores, it was just, you know, constant with in the thirties, you just helped everybody out, you know, or, or like, uh, how did they celebrate birthdays? different things like that, that you just don't think would be important. But if you want to carry on family traditions, it just might be something that you might want to know. And um, that that's something I wanted to make sure, you know, there's a list I have here. And if you want to leave emails, I can send you a list of these different kind of questions to ask. Um, if you share it with me, Barb, that file after the event, I always do a post event resources. And that can be one of the multiple sure. attachments. Sure. And I, like I said, I think it's just something like, you, you know, you think, oh, I'll ask, you know, grandpa these questions, but, or just questions. And then you're staring at him like, okay, well, you know, what, you know, what do I even ask? But, you know, it gives, this gives you a little catalyst to, you know, finding out the different stories and information and records that, you, you know, you just might not think about, you know, yeah, you know, when somebody's born, but you know, just it's fun to, to know out like, like what did they do on a Saturday night? What was the fun thing to do? Or, you know, where did they go to school? What was a typical day of school like? You know, these are just different things that family might like to all know. And uh, it might lead to some type of genealogy discovery too. You just never know. And, you know, so it starts with you, you know, as far as like what you, what's important to you, what you wanna know. Uh, and that's gonna differ from person to person. The, the records you're gonna research is gonna be different from person to person. Um, in this case, there may be a lot of Slovenians, but there may be some Polish people, there might be people from Asia. It's just gonna depend, you know, and, and that's why it's hard to like pinpoint, like this is the plan, but you know, you just gotta consider your past and where, where it kind of originated from. So even different things like family Bibles, if you have family Bibles, um, obituaries are key. You know, if you can find obituaries, that'll usually lead you down a path to your family tree, um, marriage certificates, um, even jewelry. Like sometimes jewelry will have engraving in it and you just don't realize, you know, like that that could be something that could lead you to a discovery. You know, like a date might be engraved on there or something. So even something like that, which you wouldn't think would. So, and it's important to focus on one family at a time um, again, I, you know, you find like, oh, uh, I'll start all these, uh, fires burning, but it's better to just focus on like, say your mother's mother. Okay. That's that line and kind of get as far back as you can and then take another line. So instead of being all over the place, kind of focus in one direction at a time. You know, that's something we always tell people too. Um, there's different charts that are available. Um, there's uh, generation charts, family group charts, and a lot of those you can find on Ancestry or just online. Um, we have them here, but um, a lot of that, you, you can go to Ancestry. I don't even think you need a membership, just a, just one of those free memberships that you know kind of just covers to get you into basic stuff. And you can find a lot of those things there or family search. Those are the two like heavy hitting or go to uh, databases and both of those, you can find a lot of these family group charts. So keep that in mind, um, a filing system, you know, again, everybody's gonna be different there. You're gonna want, some people want paper, some people want electronic. There's one lady that comes in that uses OneNote for everything. Everything she gets over the years, she scans and puts it in electronic folders, electronic files and, I'll have to be honest, mine is terrible. <laughs> I am all over the place with papers and, you know, so, I mean, again, it takes time. Method. Yeah, shoebox method is basically, yeah, hand, hand the family a shoebox when I, when I go, but, you know, but uh, 
and it's important too, if you can, if you're, if you're that organized too, to cite your sources where you got it, because you know, you'll be looking at something and want to follow through a little further with it and you just can't remember where you got it. And so if you can even just jot it down, like I found this in the paper on this date, you know, anything like that, that's very helpful. We always recommend that. Um, make yourself to-do lists. Like um, there's different areas where you're gonna look for information. Like there's different societies that might have more in-depth records like the OGS, which is the Ohio Genealogical Society in Bellevue. You know, sometimes you can go there and, but when you go there, you're gonna wanna know what you're looking for. Cause you're, you know, you're not gonna be going there all the time. So, or, or uh, the Allen County Public Library, which has a lot, a lot of resources too, as, as opposed to going all the way to Utah to the, the Family Search Library, Allen County has a lot there too. But make yourself to-do list when you go. One of our researchers does that all the time. She has a, like a list, like when I go to this location, I'm gonna look for these things or this look. So, you know, you don't have to revisit that sort of thing. So these are just some of the things I wanted to make you all aware of here at Akron. We um, have a lot of uh, different records from all over, mostly Ohio, but we do have it for all over. So if you get a chance to visit us or look in our catalog, we have it grouped by state and then by county and then by category, as far as like, um, like you'll find uh, starts like with atlases, biographies, uh, death records, uh, that sort of thing. So. We, we do have a lot from Ohio. So if you, if you get a chance to visit or look at our catalog, that might be good. We have for United States as well. Uh, mostly the surrounding states are, we're, we try to order mostly for those areas, but there's things you can find in those county history books, which we have most for all of the counties in Ohio and the surrounding states may not necessarily be online. So keep that in, in in mind that everything isn't online. A lot is now, but everything isn't. So keep that in mind. In mind. And also too, some of the records to consider are vital records, which would be your death, marriage, birth, census records are key. And the latest one available is 1940. Next year, 2022, the 1950 will become available. They have a 72 year um, privacy policy and uh, next year, will the 1950 will be available, and usually April. But by the time it, get, it gets indexed online, it, it might be a little longer than that. Um, again, the county histories. There's military records out there. Passenger and immigration. Now, that's we offer three different classes in that, and we have class notes on that. That's a whole entity all unto itself. Um, maps and atlases. I'm a map freak. I love maps, and I'll show you something later that we have. It's a historic map works, which you can look at maps, old, new, whatever, you know, but that's one of the databases we pay for. So you can get that with your library card. Newspapers and periodicals, there's a plethora of information on those. So, you know, beyond obituaries, you, you, you might find if your family owned a business, little ads, whatever, you know, so, and then you were showing uh, me some of that stuff and it's pretty eye-opening. Yeah, there's just but a ton you, of things. You think at first like, oh, it's just a map, but if it shows who owned the property, right. you're starting to figure out even by size of lot, you know, who had the farms, who had the, maybe the wealth, maybe where the businesses were located. That can or give even, you a business name to start researching that company name in like the news articles and Right, and even too, why people married. You know, it's like one farm was next to the Browns and were next to the Smiths. And well, okay, well, the Browns and the Smiths ended up getting, you know, because people didn't travel and they just couldn't, you know, so they just ended up, you know, marrying people all around them. So you'll see maybe like why people ended up together, you know, because of stuff like that. But, but yeah, so that's kind of like an intro that I wanted to present. Um, just different things to consider. General genealogy plans of attack, shall we say. So that oh, was great. kind of, yeah, that was kind of what I wanted to cover first. And now- oh, Great unless, nuggets buried in there. Like as a novice, I wouldn't know to, to focus one side, but it seems so logical and controllable. 
hard to tame the curiosity, but but really, really helpful. It's a puzzle. It's like a puzzle that you put the pieces together. And, you know, there's there's a lot of people that come in and just constantly work, work, work on, you know, their brick walls and different things. And we all have them. You know, we all have those brick walls. But um, what I'll do now is just kind of introduce you to some of the things we have on the Akron website. And with your library card, again, you should be able to get into most of this stuff. Um, so you would want to go to research and then you could go to databases by title or by subject, uh, genealogy, local history. I can jump right there, but I'll show you like some of the ones by title, which you, you know, I mean, there's just so many different ones. Um, and a lot of libraries have these, but I guess I'm biased. I, I like our choices, <laughs> but, um, this one people don't realize, and, and I'll go over a brief few, but these have nothing to do with genealogy, but there's a, a Chilton library, if you're fixing your car, it, it just gives you all the, the schematics to fixing your car. You just put the make and model in there and it's there, you know, so, you know, uh, and it's not coming up. There it is. So you just put that in, it tells you how to fix it, you know, and you just don't realize this stuff is out there. Uh, and again, different educational stuff, um, foundations, if you're, if you're doing foundation work, grants, help. And again, a lot of this uh, natural medicines, you know, some of that is, this is very reliable information as far as the medical end of things goes, um, legal you stuff. over an obituary date. I saw like an obituary database in there. Yes. This, this is one of the things I'll I'll bop over to the genealogy list. I, I got um, too focused too fast. Sorry. No, no, no. That's fine. Um, so genealogy, local history. This is the area where you're going to be able to branch to most of our stuff. Okay. So, like here, the databases. Now, um, I'll cover the the ones before we get into the main. Uh, ancestry and family search. I'm going to just kind of brush upon some of the ones we have here that might be of interest. If you're doing African American heritage, um, you can go here and, you know, the, it might be able to shed some light on your African American ancestors. There were some things that happened after the Civil War. Um, the Freedmen's Bureau opened the, where they opened a bank for uh, you know, African Americans because you know they they were coming from, you know, they needed to learn how to do some of that stuff. They needed to know, you know, to get loans for businesses, that type of thing. And you know, a lot of this information is on here, so you can maybe try to you know go back and and find some of your ancestors that way. The Akron Beacon Journal. Now we have from 1984 and above. We have it here online whenever it decides to load and uh, and I'll branch over to Cleveland and, and they do have something similar there. So what these are like 1984 and a current, you're gonna get text version. Um, the image version, that means like you're looking at the actual newspaper is 2018 and above. So if you're looking for an obituary and news article about somebody, you know, you can find it there. Um, so, and again, the 1984 and above is going to be basically just text or like an abstract. So you're not going to get a headshot or a picture, that kind of thing. But um, you will with the, uh, this image version, the, this image version. So um, keep that in mind. Um, American ancestors, if you have people that have been here for a really long time, this is going to delve into some of the records that, that are out there. Um, for New England and you know that sort of thing, maybe some vital records, and it, it focuses more in that direction. Um, we'll talk about ancestry in a bit. We have something called our archives catalog. Now, this again is a local focus, and I'm sure Cleveland has one as well. But like, say you were looking for something on John Brown, who was who did live in the Cleveland area or the Akron area, Hudson area at one point. We have um, realia, which is, you know, artifacts in our, in our archives and photographs. And this is going to tell you or guide you to what we have in that area. <clears throat> so, you know, keep this in mind, like his Akron History Trail materials. It's going to be a whole collection, um, you know, with, with different things 
that are Akron based. But again, Cleveland and, and the place you'll want to go for the Cleveland stuff is probably going to be your Western Reserve Historical Society primarily. Um, so that's like our archives catalog and I'll get into family search later. Fan, uh, find my past. Uh, this has a lot of good information as well, but what I like to look at on here a lot and I, and I um, look for is this uh, news, newspapers and periodicals. This is, this is a place you can get to, um, I don't know if you, any of you are familiar with like the reader's guide, this periodical source index is, is um, comparable to an actual reader's guide in that it's gonna guide you to those obscure journal articles um, from historical societies and, and just smaller groups of people um, that you might be able to find some history on your family, like so-and-so owned a farm and sold you know, had this happen and, you know, that sort of thing, which you wouldn't necessarily be able to find on a regular reader's guide index. Um, so that's something I use this one for. Uh, Heritage Quest is, is another, you know, good spot for, um, you know, a lot of different records. Now, I like to, I'll get to historical map works in a bit, but my uh, Heritage Library edition I like this because it does have a little bit more European records and I have a lot of Eastern European people. So um, this is something you can use to try to see if um, you know there's a record out there that might add to your, or break your brick wall or might add to you know, your family tree. Um, so that's something to consider. And let me back out of this here. <laughs> some of the local stuff you are talking about. So like if you know that a certain relative worked on, you know, the parks administration in an area, you might want the parks in, to go to that state, those counties and look for parks, maps and trail kind of sure. history. Yeah. History. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. But this, again, is more of a local thing, this newspaper archive. This gives you Ohio newspapers. We we've only have to the Ohio newspapers, a link to those. This used to be nationwide. And these are smaller newspapers like the Findlay Herald or the Ashtabula News Leader or something like that. And you could put in, you know, different names here and it might, you know, bring up you little articles like here's an article from the Findlay. Republican Courier with this Heil name or the East Liverpool Review. And these this covers most of Ohio. So um, this is free to use. Yeah. Um, and you might find an obituary, you might find an article about a family that you're researching, the Medina County, because that that's that's not going to be on, you know, obviously the, any of the big websites, but you know, this this newspaper archive is good for that. Um, and probably parallel type sites would be in other regions of the country for those localities if you knew you were were wanting to research one see now that newspaper archives they they limited the libraries to just the state like we can only get for ohio it used to be nation nationwide and you can right. buy into a version that's nationwide i don't think it's that expensive or anything but you know if that's something you want to do you can it is available nationwide. So, but again, most of the Aplin, which is run by the State um, Library Association, uh, gives us a lot of different use of these databases and they couldn't, like most of the Ohio libraries are probably just gonna have the Ohio part of that newspaper archive. So- but To those who joined from out of state, they, there's reason to hope that their state has something similar. Yes. Yes, you know, they'd have to look at their libraries and see what they're offering, you know, just depend would depend. But um, let me go back here. I'm trying to go back to where I was. No, I don't want that. Okay. Pass. Let me go back out of find my past. I'm going to have to just revisit this here. got out of the realm of where I want to be. Okay, 
So the next thing I want to talk about is this Ohio obituary index that you mentioned, Christy. Um, a lot of different newspapers, and it kind of says here, Akron is one of them. I don't think the Cleveland Plain Dealer does it, but a lot of different um, newspapers in Ohio entered this information in daily. We do here. Um, we have caught up from the indexes back to like 1840, as far as the Akron Beacon Journal goes. So it's gonna, what this will show you again, and I'll just put in a name. It's gonna give you a view like here, this is John Brown, it says year of death, 1888, and here place of death, Fremont. So it's gonna tell you what newspaper he had an obituary and he died April 30th, 1888. And he is in this Clyde Enterprise so it would be upon you or the Sandusky Register to actually figure out where to get that, which you can probably call their local library or you know, some of that stuff might be available on newspapers.com, which we don't have a subscription to, um, but at least it guides you to where there, you could find more information um, about that. So that's, that's what this is. And, and like, here's even current, like here's a Cleveland, he's from Cleveland, but he probably, let's see what newspaper, Sandusky Register, Lorraine Journal. So this is where to find, you know, how this index works. So you're not actually getting the information, but it's guiding you to, to where you can get it. Um, Sandborn maps are, are more of an insurance maps. Uh, and again, your company may be interested in that. Um, it, it details the different uh, buildings in an area. And um, you could just put in Cleveland, for instance, and um, I'll just see. And it, it covers more of the major metropolitan areas, not, not the smaller sections, but like here, I'm looking at Shaker Heights um, and it's gonna give you a map of the different things that an insurance company would be interested in. And you could probably tell me more about that, you know, but, um, you know, some of the maps, and I don't think this one may, but it may, let me just see if I zoom in, it's going to give like what, here, fireproof construction um, for this building, the St. Cecilia's Parochial School, um, and these are just homes around the area, but it, it it's giving you different things about the buildings, so that's kind of what the Sanborn insurance maps are going to give you. Um, it's like I'm, Google Earth from a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah, similar, similar. Yes, definitely, definitely. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what's out there. Then uh, Summit Memory is going to be something um, very Akron based again. It's a digital photo uh, site for Akron. And now the Cleveland one would be the Cleveland Memory Project. And it's not just photos. That's why I was saying you could probably put your newsletter on here. Um, like here's Akron Public Kick. Free event. She was really twisting Tim's arm once she uh, caught him. <laughs> um, like here's Akron's, uh, there's a there's a book, Artwork of Akron. And, you know, some of these things are pictures of Akron. And the Cleveland Memory Project is what you're going to want to look at in conjunction. With I can pull that up real quick. And it's going to give you similar kind of uh, thing. And, and you could put in anything. Like I think I just put in when I was kind of messing with it, Rockefeller. Only because I know there's got to be something. And, uh, you know, it's going to give you just, uh, there's the, the Forest Hills house. There's the image of it. And, you know, just different documents that they felt they wanted to include on the website. Here's image of him. I guess point of view must have been something kind of like you would have, a, you know, a little newsletter from something or another, but I bet you Rockefeller's mentioned in here, the Cleveland Bank really kind of, so, you know, yeah, keep this in mind for doing history and you could search on a relative's name and maybe it'll come up, who knows? You know, maybe they had an article about them. Um, but that's the Cleveland Memory Project. So that's kind of going through those databases. And I'll, and I'll 
revisit the map ones a little bit more later. But what I wanted to do, because um, I want to make sure we cover this stuff, um, Ancestry, which I'm sure a lot of you are aware of, we have Ancestry Library Edition. Now, um, that will cover pretty much not everything like the regular, but it's going to cover a lot of the major vital records and different things like that. So you can do a search and this is free and this is free to use with your library card from home. I believe now till the end of September, they're, they're letting it be free from home because of COVID. But, um, and again, you could do your searches and find your different vital records and immigration records, military, um, tax, that sort of thing. Now, what Christy and I did is we looked up a relative of hers and I think we started with this Conrad Stover, correct, Christy? That's the great grandpa. Um, we were trying for the most recent person who would be on that 1940 census, which you assured me was just a good general starting point. Yes, if you can get back to the 1940 census, you usually can branch off deeper into your family because what Ancestry does is it gives you records that it thinks might be related to another record. It's not always right, but it, it can be related. Now, if you want to re reacquaint me here, Christy, with what I was looking for with Conrad Stover, um, what was like a, a location that he would have been? In 1940, um, what we looked, we looked in, um, Boulder. Hoover, wasn't it Hoover? Because he was on the Hoover Dam. Right. And, and my dates might be wrong. It, Lee Washington was the next dam project. Mom, right. I wasn't clearing. I used it with the right tone. Dam. There he is. And see how what we were talking about, how they they put his name incorrectly. It's S-T-O-O-E-R. It took us a while to find him because of that. And um, I just know it's never been spelled an alternate way. Never. Um, and, and what they did was they just transcribed it. We, we realized that the census was absolute handwriting. and. I, I could make a case for that not being clear. Um, See, and it, so, it, it, is, it is probably S-T-O-V-E-R. It's just that when they transcribed it, they saw it as S-T-O-O-V-E-R. And you verified this was him because you knew his wife was Florence and there was a James and an Elizabeth. My, my grandpa and... Um, it seems funny to see Elizabeth M, but I have an Aunt Betty who was grandpa's sister um, who's living in California still, so. So we verified that this was them. And they got and, the names all wrong, it's Aunt Betty. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you could look at the ages too to verify if you're unsure where they were born, you know, different things like that. So some of this is gonna be available to you. And the census goes back to 1790. Um, <clears throat> up to 1840, though, they just listed heads of household. And then in 1850, they started listing everyone. Um, the 1890 census is primarily gone. It was destroyed in a fire. And uh, there are some records available, but that one is, is, uh, it was destroyed in a fire. So this is, this is a good place to try to start building your family. Um, so now by bringing up him and knowing, okay, so we are pretty sure this is the fellow we want, we were able to find all these other records that may or may not be him, but again, are a good starting point to trying to build, even if half of these were him, you know, it, it you know, it helps. Now, um, I think this was right. Am I correct, Christy? This was his gravestone and uh, this information is right. Uh, there was a, a Philip in the in the so and Florence were were we are definitely right there on the the spouse. So Philip was his father, and Alice was his mother. It's what it's saying here on these this uh, grave record. 
He's also my uncle Phil, but I think that's just proof that it's a family name. Right, right. So it's not letting me go there for some odd reason. But um, so you could look up Philip then too. And, and probably like if you looked at the 1910 census, which, you know, he's going to be under his father more than likely at this point. Well, maybe and not. Hints, maybe that was in Indiana. So this was in Yakima, Washington. Oh, yep. That's the, they all gravitated toward Washington. So yeah, Indiana was a birthplace. And then here's his father and mother. So what this will help you do then is like, if you clicked on him at this point, hopefully um, it will branch off to then his information further back. So this is kind of how it works you know, as far as the ancestry goes, um, you know, like, I don't know what that is, but here's a Philip Stover and he's probably listed. Okay, so he's in Dark County. So I don't know if this is the same one, but- That doesn't look like it. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. You, you just don't know for absolute sure. Here's a, a death certificate for a Philip R. Stover now. Um, I don't think this is the same one either, but again, this is kind of the stuff you have to do is, is, uh, go through and some of them might be right. And some of them might not, but, um, we're pretty sure this one is, and, um, and there's Alice, which would be the grandmother and, um, it could give her maiden name. So let's see, Wilcox. So it could be that this is her. So, and then you could click on this to see, so she married, see, I think that's another one. I don't think that's the right one, but, um, but again, this, this allows you to kind of piece through and go back further if you can. So Ancestry will do a lot of this. Now, some of the searches you can do in Ancestry, um, I like to go right to the card catalog and, and you could search on, for instance, if you were looking for Slovenian records, you could type in Slovenia and it's going to tell you all the database records that it has from the Slovenian area. Now, like here, the Slovenia, and I, I know that's a town, but I don't can't say it right, so I won't try. Sure. Um, so you could funeral accounts from 1937 to 1970 in Slovenia. So you can open this up and- um, And many of our members speak Slovenian, so they aren't even scared by it being not translated. I, oh, okay. I am I'm still 100% daunted by y'all's- uh, Ljubljana, but, how hard is it to pronounce that, Christy? Come on. <laughs> So I'm looking at, um, you know, this here, burial accounts from this um, area, I guess, 1945. Here's a volume book. And again, you, you, some of these you have to browse. Some of them you can uh, search on. But a lot of people do browse, and it's a lot of painstaking work, but you can find a lot of information. Like, And I don't know what all this is actually saying, but um, you may know, Tim. I don't know. It looks like it's a, a funeral account or like a death certificate or something along those lines. From uh, 1945. And yeah. so you never know what you'll find there. You know what I mean? I mean, as far as that goes. So, you know, keep that in mind, you know, go to the card catalog if you're unsure where to start and then just type in, even if it's just Cleveland, you can type in Cleveland. Um, but I will focus in this direction only because there was a lot of other good things look like there so I don't know what that means chronicles of the NZ New Zealand I don't know maybe a, a lot of people migrated there I'm not sure uh, um, what this is I don't know but again you can visit this and decide if any of this is of interest um, as far as Cleveland records go uh, you could just do general searches on a Cleveland name. Um, I mean, I'll do my father, you know, only because I, you know, using him as an example. Um, so if 
I wanted to find like birth, marriage, death, I would click on this category here and uh, I could put in Cleveland because again, that's going to help narrow it down. I know he's got a, a, a marriage certificate in Cleveland. So um, we'll bring that up. Uh, here's his, my parents' marriage certificate. So, I mean, there's no image there, but sometimes you will find an image and it tells you who his parents were, you know, and then that helps, you know, that just helps bring, you know, up other records. And this is my grandmother. And, you know, so, I mean, it, these are the vital records you need to substantiate your paper tree. And we won't even get into the DNA stuff, but again, that's a whole nother ball game. And I feel it's important, you know, you got your paper tree, but I think it's good to tie that in as much as you can to your, to your DNA. And, and we offer a once a month on a Monday night, I do a DNA group um, where we don't necessarily teach, but we kind of just commiserate on, you know, cause I've tested in all the sites and that sort of thing. And we kind of commiserate on all the options and tools and different things we're finding out there with the DNA. Um, so, and again, I, I, I probably won't get into that too much because that could be hours and hours. But um, what I do want to show you too here is Family Search. Now that's another database. We, we have it on our database list, but um, it really is a free database. When you sign on with one of, in one of our Akron locations and are utilizing one of our IP addresses, it, we are an affiliate with the Family Search Library in Utah. Now, the reason they have done so much research and recorded so much on genealogy is because the Mormons have a um, belief that um, the ancestors need to be, even though they're passed away, they need to be baptized. So they have to like find to be saved or whatever. And to, so they have to like find their family tree, find all the names and baptize those people by proxy. So there's people that actually get baptized under these other names. So that's why they have have so much information and they make it freely available to people. Um, again, we're an affiliate here. So the records were able to get in a little deeper to some of the records. So just keep that in mind. There's family history centers. There's one here in um, on Talmadge in, in Stowe. Now there's, I'm sure, one up in Cleveland. There's the, the center up in Kirtland. I'm sure, you know, that you'll be able to get deeper into some things that way. So when you go to search here now, in, when you're in family, you have to sign up for like a free online uh, sign on. But so that's basically what I did. I just signed on with that. So when you do a search, Again, what I like to do with records, so I'll search for records and it gives you a kind of a cool little way to do it. Um, you can choose by map. Okay, so I clicked on Europe. So now if I were to choose Slovenia, they have a ton of stuff here available too. And you'll see, you can search, but some of this stuff is only browsable. So I'll just show you the, the data sets that are out there. Like here, for instance, there's 116 images of the Slovenian civil records, okay? But if you go down the line, you see all of these are different data sets that are out there that are available for you to search. Um, and again, there's land records, directories, ethnic political religious, religious groups, family trees. You might even have a family tree you could link into. And it's, it's also worth noting that uh, if you know your, uh, in this case, European history, that Slovenia was uh, ruled by the Austrian Empire for quite a bit of time. So some of the going back further, you may have to go to another, you know, like the Austrian uh, records. Another, so yeah. The Habsburg, Austria, Habsburg. Yeah. But anyway, so, you know, again, these are data sets. So some of them may be just browsable. Some of them might be where, you know, you can search. Like in this case, this is a book, okay? So you can go to see where you can find this book. You can go on something called worldcat.org and see if you can locate this book to be um, interlibrary loan to you, you know, that sort of thing. Um, 
and it's probably at the Church of the Latter-day Saints, and they may not even let some of that stuff go. I don't know, but um, I don't know what this is, but it claims to be a birth marriage death record from 1868. And this is microfilm, uh, and, and it's probably here, and it's telling you it's at the Family History Library, um, which is in Utah. They used to they used to let this stuff out, but they don't, they haven't been anymore, but they've put a lot online digitized. Like if I click on here and because we're an affiliate, we'll be able to get at a lot of these records and you can browse through and see if you kind of know what year and if you can read this. And, and again, it's a painstaking process, but you can get at a lot of this re these records this way. and. I know a fellow that comes in pretty regular. He does not Slovenia, but Slovakian records. He has rifled through these. And like, here's a, you can see Rosa Nimitz and a, I, Horvath, you know, so, I mean, you, you might have to actually rifle through them and see, but there's information out there. And again, I don't think this is necessarily something you can search on because of the fact that that cursive is, um, questionable and if it was indexed it might be that the indexing was kind of iffy so I wanted you to see those Slovenian records and again you could put any area if you wanted America if you wanted to put like like what we use a lot on here and this is something that I want you to be aware of Ohio um, the death certificates are online from 1908 to 1953. You can get a little further at the Ohio History Center in Columbus um, to 1963, I think. But, you know, like if you wanted to look for a, a, a death certificate from somebody um, from, and I'm just pulling a random person up. Uh, okay, so this person, okay, let me get to the depth doesn't matter, just death. Let me back out of this a minute. I'm gonna browse. And another way to get to some records too is instead of browsing by, by the map, you can browse by, went back out too far. If you wanna search records, um, there's this browse all published collections. You can click on there instead of going through to the map and then um, put in, like I'm gonna put in Ohio deaths because I wanna see the data set that contains all that information that they have, re that they've digitized. So 1908 to 1953, um, I'm going right to that data set and it's not going to search everything, but just the data set that I've chosen. Um, okay. And again, because I'm assuming there must be a John Brown in here. So here is a John Brown born in 1865, burial 1919. And over here, you can actually view the um, record uh, if, okay, there it is. Ugh. The internet is a wonderful thing. Okay, so here, let me. And then you can open up the actual death certificate itself. Now, again, these are um, things that are, if you had somebody that died in Ohio between those years, you can get it. And different areas are gonna be that way. And on here, a lot of times the death certificate will say who his parents were, like name of father, name of mother, you know, and that takes you back. And this is something that is a vital record that is in most cases gonna be um, considered valid, you know, as far as like, if you're trying to go back to the DAR, you know, Daughters of the American Revolution or, or the Mayflower, this is gonna be something that's considered valid, you know, to, to prove your case. Um, that's the two databases we use the most, I would say, Ancestry and Family Search. And before we are done, I do want to bring up the fact we have this historic map works. What it is, is a, um, uh, 
Is that your library barcode? Or Mine, that... yes. This is with the library barcode. Which we'd have even if we did an online card application. Yes, correct, so correct. So what this will do is, and again, you can search by area this way too, and I'm just doing it for ease of, and um, clicking on Ohio and uh, you could click on Slovenia really, but um, so I'm gonna search Cleveland. And then once you, I know you wanted to get to MapWorks, but we should probably go ahead and force ourselves to stop the noodle, the, the noodle that could go on forever and it open up. Forever. But just be aware there's maps of Cleveland from, you know, back in the day here, you know, and you can look at them. And they are worth looking at. You, you and I were finding it very interesting to see who owned property and how right. things have changed and what it can tell you. And not um, a lot of locations have this historic map works, just to let you know. Um, we do um, pay into it, but uh, again, with the library card, you can get that. Um, yeah, that was something I wanted to make everyone aware. Uh, Summit memory, Cleveland memory. Now some of the Cleveland stuff, um, this, this is really kind of cool and you should not not utilize it. When you have your Cleveland Cuyahoga card, similar kind of thing. They've got a ton of different databases, but what they have, which could be informative is they have the plain dealer. Um, so they have it to 1990 up to 1991 on the current, but then they have back to 1845 to 1991 here. Now this is with your Cuyahoga County card. You can get this. Another thing you can get, and, and you don't even need a card, but it's in the Cleveland Public Library, um, is the necrology, which is important too when you're doing your research. They have um, research database and, and they're gonna have the necrology file which I'm looking for here. This is gonna tell you about obituaries and where you can find, where is it, necrology file? I don't know if they moved it. Oh, here it is. So you could put a name in and like I'll put this in. And, and again, it's gonna branch you over to different, um, places where an obituary might be located. Like this is my grandmother. So it gives a basic, it says it's in the Cleveland Press, which you can get at Cleveland State University. So if you want the actual obituary, you can get it there. Uh, and it's real microfilm 127. So this is my grandmother it's saying who, um, or my great grandmother, who she was married to, who her kids were when she died. So this again, will help you build your family tree this kind of stuff. So those are two things in Cleveland, the Western Reserve Historical Society, don't forget, I showed you the Cuyahoga County Plain Dealer where you can find some information there. Cleveland State has the Cleveland Press. Um, there is also something called Slovenian. And it's more of a, a place where you can, Slovenian Gen Web, um, where you can find just some places to link you to different Slovenian information. Uh, just don't forget about some of this stuff um, if you you know in your in your research. So um, so yeah, is there? Yeah. I mean, there's endless things I could cover.